defense? No, he said, make sure you take care of yourself because I don't want you to get, come back with an infection. Oh, you see, they're so he's out. setting you up yes. to blame you yes. for not taking care exactly. of yourself. So, what is going on with your breasts? What's the first okay, thing you Okay, from the very beginning, was my first boob job when I was 19 in Beverly Hills. What size implants did you start with? 550. Okay, pretty big. Pretty small. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So then I got my second breast augmentation in Bolivia. Why? Why not? No. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Bolivia, but I mean, why? Because I just like to travel. And what size did you put I did in? 700. 150 bigger? 150 cc increase is like, you know, 10 tablespoons. I know, I thought it would be major, and it wasn't major. Who's flying to Bolivia for 10 tablespoons of silicone? It's like going from Los Angeles to New York for a cup of tea. After that, um, I did my breasts again, and I did 800. Where'd you do that? In Colombia, so. She went up 100 cc's. <laughs> I just had to see, like, maybe I'll be satisfied. Were you? No. Okay. <laughs> and then just over the years, it just looks like my areolas are two different shapes, which is so embarrassing. Right. And I want them done again. I need hella more. Well, how can you get bigger than 800 cc's? You can make them. Make big silicone implants. Yes, you guys have the connection. I was always a happy person and everything. I have a very close family. And I thought I was normal. But in high school, I think it was sophomore year, I took a weight training class and I just developed a love for it. And it's kind of like a high. Like, I love to be in the gym. I love lifting weights. And that's when I started noticing that my right side was growing muscle. And then my left side wasn't, wasn't catching up at all. My mom had taken me to the doctor just to see exactly what was going on. And the doctor told me that I had Pullum syndrome. At that time, my aunt had mentioned that there was a doctor in Mexico. He had done work on another relative, breast implants. And she said he was a really great doctor. And then I was really anxious just to get it done. And it was gonna be like maybe half the cost. And once we got there, he said it'd be three grand and then everything would be good and whatnot. So I was just like, okay, let's do this. They started like, putting some drugs in me and whatnot, and, and I instantly fell asleep. I woke up the next day, I believe, and I was just super sick. Like, there was this random nurse lady. She didn't speak English, so she was just holding a bucket in front of me. I'm just throwing up everywhere. That, that moment, I pretty much was like, okay, this is the end of the road for me. I can't believe I came to Mexico to die. But luckily, as soon as I saw my mom, I just rose from the dead like a zombie. I'm like, hey, we gotta get out of here. We have to leave, this is not good. Year 2010. I go to Colombia for only two weeks to go see my family. My cousin, she tells me about this great doctor that was having discounted surgery on lipo. I went to see him and he said, yeah, we can do some lipo on your back. And um, he said, and you know what? With that fat, we can actually kind of recycle it. We can transfer it to your butt. Okay. I didn't tell my husband this because I wasn't going there for surgery. It just kind of happened, and I, I was in love with the results. When my husband saw me, he said, what did you do? You look different. And I was just smiling, saying, no, I, I didn't do nothing. I was just working out. <laughs> but then, 2014, I started feeling this, felt like pebbles. Sitting down, it was uncomfortable. It right. pinched me. Okay. And that's when I told my husband. Yeah. My husband is freaking out. What? But when did you do it? The fat yeah. transfer, you never told me about this. So um, I go to Colombia and I go see this doctor. He said that it was, in fact, it, that was silicon. And on the MRI, it's showing. It's all over my butt. What did he tell you? We had to take it out immediately. Okay. He said, you're lucky. This can kill you. You don't want to mess with injected silicone. It can cause massive recurrent bumps, lumps called granulomas. When that happens, this could damage the tissue. It can get in your blood supply. It can cause a clot. It can kill you. Um, I go in surgery about three days later. Okay. So he's making a big incision, one side to the other. God, okay. And then he's taking all the fat. Removing fat with silicone from this, in Yeah, it. right. I come out from surgery. I was shocked. Yeah. Wow. He took your buttock away. Completely, he removed it. He mutilated me. He said, just wait about six months to a year, and you're gonna have to come back, and we'll do a reconstruction. I didn't have enough fat, I didn't, mm -hmm. I was very slim. He said, we're gonna have to go with... Implants. Implants. Okay. It was horrible. The implants were towards my side. Yes. They're uh, not in the middle where they're supposed to be. I didn't see no projection. Right. I feel like I was, 
and I'm still, I'm still deformed. Not only did this change my life physically, but my husband and I are now thinking of separating. He has lost all trust in me, and I don't think he'll ever forgive me for what I did. Right now, I feel very disappointed in myself, I feel ashamed and guilty. The next patient is Carmen, mm -hmm. a transgender male to female, and she can't breathe. And so she's here for our help. Let's take a look at it. Very pretty. Yeah, but very operated on. Yeah, look at that. Oops. Oh. Some scars in the ear. And that's right where I need cartilage. So this is gonna be a little bit challenging. Hi. Carmen. Carmen. Beautiful. Oh, I get a hug. Yeah, Beautiful young lady. Yeah, I'm here today, finally, to get me a consult with the doctors. And I'm kind of nervous because I've undergone so many surgeries, but I want this to be my final and last no shot. Can you give us a little background? Because I don't know much, so maybe you can start from the beginning. I transitioned to high school and at graduating, and I told my sisters and my mother, I think it's time for me to get a nose job. So I went to Mexico, Guadalajara. Mm. It was like going to a fast food restaurant, and you're going on the menu board and picking what you want. They give you a list. You get three things, you get one for free. Hamburger, fries, nose job. You should not be ordering surgery off a menu. If you know you're doing something like that, you know you need to get up and you need to run out as fast as your legs will carry. You went with the idea of having your breasts done and a tummy tuck for stretch marks primarily. Yes. How did they put the implants in? I didn't see any incisions on no, your No, he put the implants in through my abdomen. He put the breast implants in yes. through your tummy. Placing implants through a tummy tuck incision, in my opinion, it's never a good idea because it's a long way to go and the chance of a complication is really high. How many hours of surgery did you have? 11 to 12 hours. 11 to 12 hours yes. of anesthesia? Out? Out. Crystal's last surgery could have literally been her last surgery. Eight hours is the time when risks start to go up of anesthesia complications and difficulties from prolonged recovery. So the next day, the nurse wakes me up and she says, shower time. Showered you the next day? They showered me the next day. There you and go, there's, there's one of the reasons why cold you cold water. Within 24 hours, they washed you off in fresh wounds. Contaminated, just automatically. Wow. So you developed um, an infection. Yes. Infection, yeah. But when he saw that pus, he didn't say anything about all that pus? No, he said, make sure you take care of yourself because I don't want you to get, come back with an infection. Oh, you so he's out. setting you up yes. to blame yes. you for not taking care exactly. of yourself. I told you to take care of yourself. The day of the surgery, and I'm not joking about this, they both came in with like a really big block of ice. I was there probably an hour lying there with the ice. That's an automatic burn after 15 minutes. Dr. Ice was your anesthesiologist. Dr. Ice was my anesthesiologist. I'm not kidding. The problem with using ice as an anesthetic agent is that it kills the tissue before you operate on it. So he essentially was operating through dead skin, which just wouldn't heal properly. You know, you have a really significant problem. I don't mean just cosmetically, I mean just physiologically yeah. in the tissues. So we really need to have a very close look at your stomach and see if there's enough loose skin to do the job we need to do. So let's go take a look. Okay, perfect. All right? As far as things that can go wrong with a tummy tuck, Desiree had every one of those things occur. There are things I need to know. You can see that your pubic area has been pulled way up and your pubic skin with the hair bearing component is very high. <laughs> see, she does have some laxity, so that's good. You are a little more lax now, but the skin is very, very damaged. What we theoretically can do is make an incision here and lift everything up and lift the pubic skin up as well and bring it down and stitch it down here to put everything back where nature wants it. I think it could be improved, but it's risky. What I'm concerned about is the notion that it's irreversibly damaged the tissue so that it may render it potentially unfixable. And the question is, are you willing to take on that risk Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah? Or I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Right. Definitely. I just kind of have that feeling there'll be a brilliant outcome, but I'm, I'm ready to take the risk. And fingers crossed that this heals beautifully, okay? So, and you're going to get the fat from the back, right? Oh, yeah. Perfect. 